Hi, this is John Guandola with Understanding the Threat with your weekly roundup for the week ending May 22nd, 2020. And what a week it's been. So interestingly, uh, we now have more details on the attack at the Naval Air Station Corpus Christi, which just happened on uh, Thursday morning in Corpus Christi, Texas. And what we found out is that uh, Adam Salim Al Sali was the perpetrator who drove his vehicle, tried to drive it through the gate, but the uh, blockades blocked him. So he exited his vehicle. He was wearing a uh, bulletproof vest and uh, began firing his weapon and uh, wounded one, uh, one sailor or one security personnel and um, was shot and killed. They believe that there was one other uh, person who was a part of this uh, jihadi attack, uh, but they got away. And so the FBI believes there's one person at large. What is the point? What, what's the, uh, the takeaway that understanding the threat and that I would like to leave with you all to contemplate? Well, it's this. Uh, Al-Sali was a Saudi. Again, that's another Saudi attack on a U.S. military base following the December 2019 attack at Naval Air Station Pensacola. And the other thing that I think is pretty important is that uh, we know that Al-Sali was a Sharia adherent Muslim. He actually uh, attended university in Saudi Arabia studying Sharia, Allah's divine law, Islamic law. So here's the question. Another attack in Texas. Texas since 9-11 has had more jihadi attacks than any other state in the United States. Fort Hood, a U.S. Army major attacking Fort Hood Army Base and killing 14 people and wounding over 30 others, is a part of the problem. But the bigger problem is that the Islamic organizations in Texas, almost without exception, are hostile. We've got 108 mosques that we know about in Houston, Texas. We have 57 mosques that we know about in the Dallas area. We have uh, close to 300 mosques, actually the latest numbers might be over 300, in Texas alone, but right around that number. You have a tremendous network here in Texas. Dallas is the largest hub for Hamas, the terrorist group, which is a part of the Muslim Brotherhood, an inherent part, outside of Chicago, Illinois, which is the headquarters for Hamas in the United States. The largest Islamic charity in America, the Holy Land Foundation for Relief and Development, was here in the Dallas, Texas area. And what do we also know about the Holy Land Foundation? Besides that it's a Muslim Brotherhood organization, it's a Hamas organization. So the largest Islamic charity in America was a terrorist organization, and it was based in the Dallas area. That's Texas, by the way. We also know that Islamic schools in Texas are teaching the very material that produced people like Adam uh, uh, al-Sahi, which is why I'm bringing this up. In Islamic schools all over Texas, they teach that the purpose of Islam is to impose Allah's divine law, Sharia, on every human being on the earth. And the way to do it is through jihad, warfare against non-Muslims. And quote, the duty of Muslim citizens is to be loyal to the Islamic State, end quote. So my question is, since we have all this going on, we've got the Islamic Center, Education Center in Houston, celebrating the 1979 Iranian Revolution and the call for global jihad against the non-Muslim world, no action taken by DPS, by local law enforcement, by FBI there, no investigation initiated. We see uh, Hamas doing business as care, holding Muslim Day at the state capitol in Texas, no FBI investigation, no DPS investigation. Instead of Hamas leaders in Texas and the United States being locked up and executed for conspiring with foreign governments to commit murder, to commit acts of terrorism, to commit uh, conspiracy to overthrow the U.S. government, our leaders are embracing them, including 
Republicans and Democrats here in Texas. This is outrageous. The Texans, because there have been more jihadi attacks here than anywhere else, should rise up and hold their state legislators, the lieutenant governor, the governor, and the attorney general accountable to get off their butts and do something and stop putting us at risk and our families at risk. They have a duty, they swore an oath to do it. Stop molly coddling the Muslims, the jihadis, and do what you're supposed to do, which is secure liberty and secure the citizens of Texas. If you want more information, I encourage you to read our article at understandingthethreat.com. I encourage you to support our work because Understanding the Threat is the only organization in America empowering citizens, police, local and state officials with tools to identify jihadi and communist networks at the local level and dismantle them at the local level. We need all of you and we need your help. If you have the ability, please consider being a Minute Man or Minute Woman and join our fight. Go to understandingthethreat.com. Join us by supporting our Freedom Fund. Donate at least $25 a month to Understanding the Threat and let us do the fighting for you. Let us be commissioned by you to be warriors in this battle or let us train you to be warriors in this battle to take the fight to the enemy and put freedom back on the offensive where it belongs. This Memorial Day, let's think about taking actions that will prevent further wars and deal with the enemies right here in our neighborhoods, in Austin, in Dallas, in Houston, as well as in West Palm Beach, Miami, Los Angeles, San Diego, Wichita, Kansas, Oklahoma City, New York City, Washington DC, Fairfax, Virginia, and everywhere else where there's a jihadi population looking to overthrow the US government. Thank you and God bless you.